Hi, my name is Ken Hughes and welcome back to the channel. Honored to have you back. Today we're going to talk about the power of the network. I've always been fascinated by the, the scale, the speed and the power of networks. And obviously over the last number of years as social media has grown, the scale, speed and power of those networks has had more and more impact on the brands and businesses that we run. I'm going to use three examples today, three kind of modern cases in society that I think represent the scale, power and speed of networks. Um, and using those examples, we maybe draw some conclusions from what we can do as brands and businesses to leverage the power of networks in our own marketing strategy. So the first one I want to talk about is what happened a couple of weeks ago in the Eurovision 2022. So one day after Russia invade Ukraine, the European Broadcasting Union decide to Russia, tell the head of Russia, no, you are not allowed into the Eurovision this year. Uh, this is a sanction. Uh, I don't know how removing some plastic pop from someone's life <laughs> has an impact, but there you go. Um, and so Ukraine went forward uh, into the Eurovision, as all other countries did. And what we witnessed uh, a couple of weeks ago, they came out of their semi-final and they came first. That was kind of a show of solidarity. And in the final itself, they ended up winning the contest. Now, was their song a winning entry? Well, lots of weird entries often win the Eurovision. Um, that's no quality control bar. But what happened in, was interesting if you look at the way the judging works for Eurovision. So on one hand, 50% of the judging for Eurovision is held by the juries themselves in each country. And there are people who are looking at the songwriting, the song performance, the artistic license of the song. And so it's a very much a, an independent judged panel. And they placed Ukraine fourth after all of the judging. And obviously some of those judges were, would have been judges in, in Estonia and Latvia and Poland and countries near Ukraine. And unsurprisingly, they judged them quite high, other countries in the middle. But what was really interesting was when the other 50% of the votes came in, which is the televoting public vote from all over Europe. Now in the past, there have been songs that have been, let's say, novelty or tacky songs in Eurovision where the judging panel haven't enjoyed them, but the popular vote loved them and then they win because of the popular vote. And this time that also happened. So while the judging um, panel found the Ukraine to be in fourth place, the popular vote placed them very much number one, so much so that they, you know, together with both votes, they won the Eurovision. Now, was it because the song was amazing? No, it was probably because most citizens in Europe who were voting that night felt that they deserved a solidarity vote, that the Ukraine deserved to be seen and heard by Europe, and this was our way of saying we stand with you. And it just, for me, showed the power of networks, the scale of a network, where a network can dictate a election result, where a, a network can dictate the success or failure of something, and just the scale of this, because it's across 40 countries in Europe, and the commonality of the voting was amazing, and all the televoting, every single country was all aligning to one purpose. And think about this as a brand and business, therefore, the scale of the networks that you have access to are bigger than ever before. And if you can get your brand and business talked about in a peer-to-peer -peer conversation, the scale of that potential is huge. Now, similarly, of course, the scale of a network, if they turn against your brand and business, can be very, very scary. And that leads us on to the second story I want to talk about. So that's a story about the scale of networks. Here I want to talk about the speed of networks. So on the 20, was it? No, 13th, on the 13th of May, um, a driver, a Lyft driver, picks up Jackie from a business that she owns, a restaurant and a bar, and she makes a remark when she gets into the car. In fact, let me show you. It's about a 1 minute 15 clip, so it's, it's short enough for me to drop into the video. Here. Have a look at this. Hello. Hello. For Jackie, right? Yeah. How are you? Yeah, you're like a white guy. What's that? Are you like a white guy? Excuse me? <laughs> like a normal guy? Like you speak English? Sorry. Sorry. No, you can get out of the car. I'm going to cancel the ride. That's inappropriate. What? It's completely inappropriate. If somebody was not white sitting in the seat, what would be the difference? Are you serious? She said, wow, you're a white guy. Oh, well. That's okay. I'm not going to take the ride. You guys can get out. Really? Yeah. Completely inappropriate. Oh, you're a fucking asshole. It's all on you're camera, a piece man. Of shit. It's all on I camera. I should punch you in the fucking face. Oh you're going to threaten God. me. Yeah, Assault. I'm threat yeah, fuck you. Wow. Because you guys are racist fucks. Dude, you're a fucking asshole. Yeah. No, no, I'm calling the cops on you, man. Go ahead. It's all on camera. It's all on camera. Do you guys own the place? Is it your place? Get the fuck out That's of great. Everyone's gonna know. Jack Fossil's last stand for black fuck people, you. right? Yeah. Fuck off, you. So that one remark. So Jackie makes a racial remark. The driver correctly pulls her up on it and asks her to leave. And what ensues afterwards is a bit of an altercation. But what's interesting is one hour after that dash cam footage was taken. 
James uploaded that onto his social media. Within just one hour, we live in an ever recording, every always on world. And overnight, it got shared and reposted and shared and viral. And so within literally 24 hours, it had gone viral. And within another 24 hours, the Fossil's Last Stand business was closed, the website was down, and there was two and a half thousand Yelp reviews, all with one star. So immediately the network, the speed of the network took over. And because people agreed with what James had done, they showed their support by clicking that one star on Yelp, by clicking that one star on Google reviews, and then the business suddenly had to close. And I don't know, in you know, a couple of weeks later, what the status of the business is. It's amazing the building hasn't been burnt down, I'll be honest. So the, that's one thing about the power of a network, but look at the speed. One remark by someone on a Friday evening killed her own business over the weekend. And imagine, by the way, if Jackie hadn't owned that business, if that driver had made an assumption and had shared, because only she shared it within an hour, you would have killed an innocent business. And so the power of the network still remains very, very strong. Uh, who dictates the truth? Because the network reacts very, very quickly and sometimes maybe, just maybe, without the right information, which leads us on to the third case. I want to talk about the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard case. Now, it depends on where you are on this at the moment, depending on your own previous life experiences maybe, but certainly most of your... Um, I think perception of who's right and who's wrong in this will come from the media that you're consuming. You're either consuming mainstream media, which may have a more balanced view, but most people in the world are consuming it via social media. And social media, of course, is an echo chamber and you will see certain things. There's a lot of memes and a lot of jokes and a lot of reels going around about the case. We're all fascinated by it. Nobody knows what happens. You or I, we don't know. We weren't in the room. Uh, the only people that were in the room were Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. So all we have is stories and hearsay. Objection, hearsay. What does it mean to understand truth. And so here, what social media certainly has decided is that Johnny Depp is a lovable rogue and Amber is an abusive, uh, out of control person. That's what seems to be the, 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 the main conversation on social media. You've got Johnny, Justice for Johnny trending, you've got Amber Turd trending. And so there is no right or wrong, of course, because they all have their own truths, but the network is deciding the truth. And this is, again, the power of a network. This is gladiator and lions kind of stuff. Often, and by the way, social media, we, the consumers of social media, are the lions tearing people apart without necessarily understanding truth. Now, the point here is you can't stop this. So your brand and business is the same. You can be torn apart by the network regardless of the truth. So we have often thought we own the brand and that our marketing strategy is us talking about our brand and however we want to talk about it. But today, unfortunately, the only truth that seems to matter is the truth of the peer network. So how they perceive our brand, how they perceive our business is the truth. Whether we like it or not, that is the truth that we need to work with. And so we need to be able to understand, to, to manage the conversation, to, to curate, not only create conversations in the peer network, but to curate them, to manage them, to monitor them, to understand what's being said about brands and businesses. Because if we don't, we can fall foul of this with speed, scale, and power of networks, those three things that I've talked about today. Now, I've talked about them quite negatively, but actually there is, of course, huge positivity in those three things too. If you get it right, if you put your message out there and the network aligns with your message and they respect your values and you have shared purpose and they talk about the brand, then you have access to the scale, speed, and power of a network. Get it wrong and things will react very quickly. I mean, Wilson, the CEO of Lululemon, famously blamed fat women for the quality control issues on, the, on their yoga pants, saying that their ties were rubbing together, causing the problems. I mean, and he didn't survive that because again, he stepped down from, as chairman soon afterwards, again, left the board soon afterwards. And so brands will suffer from cancel culture much more quickly than they did only, and that was, by the way, 2013, 2014. It was only eight years ago. That it, within, in today's economy, that would, that would happen within a day. And so I think what we need to be careful of as brands is to be able to harness the peer network. If we acknowledge that it has scale, speed, and power, then how can we in our marketing strategies harness some of that scale, speed, and power for our brands and business? How can we have a peer uh, economy strategy? How can we leverage user-generated content? How can we push the conversations out and curate the conversations about our brand? Because that power of the network is a very, very real power that I think most brands and businesses don't utilize in their marketing strategies. Until next time, I'm Ken Hughes.